All right, guys, we are now officially in the home stretch for the Marvel Studios She Hulk Attorney at Law Disney Plus series. Today, we just got episode seven on Disney Plus out of nine episodes. And this was actually a really fun episode. I really enjoyed this. As you know, if you've been watching my, uh, my last couple episode reviews and breakdowns, the show kind of hit a, a major dip for me. Uh, episode five was all right. Episode six, I really did not enjoy at all. But this was definitely, you know, rising back up in quality here with this episode. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, there was, a, there was a reveal at the end that, like, was super predictable and wasn't as big as I would have liked it to have been. But it was still cool. So anyways, guys, without further ado, we are going to go and break down this episode. So spoiler warning, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to go check out She-Hulk Episode 7 titled The Retreat on Disney+. Plus. So let's get into this. All right, so things with Josh and Jen are going really, really, like, extremely well here. Now, I'm going to be honest. You may be confused. Like, you didn't even mention Josh in last, last week's episode video because I honestly don't even remember Josh. Uh, to be honest... I just woke it up when I watched that episode. I was still half asleep when I was watching that episode. I almost fell asleep multiple times through that episode. So I, I don't even remember who Josh was in that, to be completely honest. I remember watching like somebody else's review that night and being like, Josh, who, who who's Josh? I don't remember Josh. Well, now I know who Josh is. So they met at the wedding. And so... Things are going really well in their relationship, and Jen is really enjoying this because, you know, every other guy that she's been with in this series so far has only liked her for S.H.I.E.L.D., but this is the first guy that actually likes Jen as Jen, and things go really well until they end up sleeping together, which, you know, usually that would be a pretty nice moment for the relationship, but things take a bit of a turn because then after that, he ghosts her. He just, she wakes up. He's gone. She seems like, oh, you know, he had to go to work. He had to wake up early. Whatever. I'll text him. And then days go by and he does not respond. That is just like the worst feeling right there. But luckily, she has something to occupy her time here as apparently there's been an alert on Blonsky's inhibitor. So, of course, the, he's wearing an inhibitor because he, w with the deal with his parole is he's not allowed to transform into abomination. So there's some sort of alert. So Jen has to go check it out. So she and his parole officer, they go up to Blonsky's ranch that he's been living at, and this is where we meet some of his friends. So we meet Manbull and El Aguila, um, who are both uh, Marvel Comics characters. El Aguila, I know for sure, is a mutant. I don't know about Manbull for sure, but still, it's just really, really cool that we are, we're getting these crazy C-list, D-list Marvel villains popping up in this series. It's just so much fun. But anyway, those two are fighting and it ends up with Jen's car getting wrecked, so she's stuck there. So she has to just uh, kind of hang out at Blonsky's ranch here. There's no Wi-Fi, so she can't get her any of her work done. And so when she's stumbling around trying to, to find some service, she finds like one little patch of service when she stumbles upon their spiritual meeting. So, of course, Manbull and El Aguila are there as well. Of course, Blonsky is leading the group. And then we also get introduced to Saracen, who believes he's a vampire. I've never heard of this character before, but again, I'm assuming he's a character from the comics. But also Porcupine as well, which I was so excited to see Porcupine. I've done a couple videos here on the channel about Porcupine popping up in this series. So that was definitely really a lot of fun. I think, I think he was a really funny character as well. I liked his design and everything. Super comics accurate. And so basically... They're all talking through their problems here when all of a sudden the Wrecker walks in. Of course, the Wrecker being the leader of the Wrecking Crew that we saw back in episode three, I believe. And even Jen mentions in this episode of like, do you guys even remember who they are? Because, um, I mean, that was a long time. That was four episodes ago. And now they're finally bringing that up. And, you know, he comes in and he's talking about his problems as well. You know, trying to work through some stuff. And then we lead, of course, to Jen talking about her problems, trying to learn to appreciate herself as Jen. And that's when she eventually reverts back to her Jen form because she's been in She-Hulk form for this whole episode. But then also the porcupine finally takes off his mask. He's smelling a little funky, but it was still really cool to get the face reveal of porcupine. And so basically Jen, she learned a lesson. She learned to appreciate herself. She learned to be 
vulnerable as Jennifer Walters with this group of men. And I thought that was really cool. It was a really nice, powerful moment for the episode. But I still feel like there's something... There's got to be something more going on here. Because obviously this isn't the end. We only have two episodes left after this. And a lot to cover with Daredevil and Frogman. The Intelligentsia. Who knows what else is going to be going on here. But we also know based off trailer footage that Abomination is showing back up again. Now it looked kind of like a Professor Hulk Abomination type thing there. Where he's wearing a shirt and all that. So I don't know exactly what the case is going to be. Um, if he, I mean, he kind of looked like he was dancing around and partying. So I don't, I don't think Abomination is going to go full villain again, but again, there's just gotta be something more going on here, especially the fact that the Wrecker showed up here and they just played it off so casually that he's there. Obviously Jen freaked out about it at first, but we never got any answers as to, you know, how we got that weapon where he got them, those weapons for, uh, what happened to the rest of the Wrecking Crew, uh, who he was working for. We never get any of those questions answered. I feel like we have to get that at some point here. It's just too too big of a question, too big of a question mark just left here on this episode to be kind of just brushed under the rug. So anyway, we get kind of a happy ending for that storyline right there until we have to get the big reveal at the end with three days later is the night that Jen and Josh, they slept together. Of course, the middle of the night, Josh is up, he's awake. He's getting a little mischievous here, and he's copying information and data from Jennifer's phone, and then on top of that, t- really creepily takes a picture of her. She's not wearing anything, so that's like basically porn, and so this is while she's sleeping, and then text this to the Hulk King with like these Hulk blood emojis. So what I was thinking this scene was going to be is actually showing him taking her blood, because that's when she's most vulnerable, she's in gen form, she's asleep, it's not like she can stop him, I thought that's what it would have been, and for all we know, maybe he did do that, we just didn't get to see that, but it was definitely really interesting, because we still got to find out who this Hulk King is, some people have been theorizing it's Todd, and I fully believe that there's more going on with Todd, I just don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case if he's like the the big bad i still think slash hope that the leader is going to be involved here especially since we know that he, that uh tim blake nelson is coming back for the character in captain american new world order so that just makes perfect sense but i mean we'll see i guess we'll have to wait and see it, it is again th- this definitely took a an uptake in quality from the last two episodes But it's still the fact that it's still the same problem that we're having with these other shows. Even though this one has more episodes, usually it's six episodes, this has nine. But still, there's only two episodes left and there's still so much that has to be done, so much that has to be revealed. They're taking the WandaVision and Hawkeye approach where they wait to reveal the villain until like the last episode or two. Which, you know, obviously isn't a bad thing necessarily, but it's just it's going to feel rushed. So we'll have to wait and see what happens, but I'm really back into the show. I really enjoyed episode seven. And again, most likely next week's episode, we're getting Daredevil. We're getting some Frogman. So I'm excited to see where things go with She-Hulk Attorney Law. But anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think about Marvel Studios She-Hulk Attorney Law episode seven on Disney Plus. Did you enjoy it? Was it better than the last couple episodes? And what do you think is going on with Josh? Is maybe he a member of the Wrecking Crew? Who is he working for? Who's the Intelligentsia? Who is the Hulk King? But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please drop a give enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep it to date on everything goes on in the Marvel life.